Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Light of the Valley. It is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and what we have for you um, in worship today is we're actually tying uh, today's service more into what just happened here this past week. Uh, hopefully you're aware, hopefully we put enough word out. You saw the, uh, the posters and, and all the decorations as you came in and the art project specifically. Uh, we had our first ever uh, art studio Bible camp this last week. So we had uh, about 21 kids, I think it was 21 kids, participated in that uh, Bible camp. And through it, they were taught uh, different things, different uh, procedures, different art projects. And through that, uh, we came away with the theme, We Are God's Masterpiece. As we're bringing that theme over into this Sunday, using the words from Jeremiah chapter 18 to talk about God as the potter and us as the clay, and talk about how is it that he makes us his masterpiece. So taking a short little break from our Galatians series, and we got two more uh, sermons yet to come to finish out the book of Galatians, but today, focusing more on that idea, we are God's masterpiece. We're going to talk about that and how God works, how he is the potter and we are the clay. Uh, so again, we'll continue with the worship as we have been doing over the summer. Our first hymn is printed there on pages 2 and 3 in our worship folder, In Christ Alone. So let's begin our worship this morning by singing those words, knowing that only in Christ is our hope is found. So that, God bless your worship here today. Mm -hmm.
page 3 in our worship folder. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. We have come in the presence of God who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we've disobeyed Him, deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from earth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you the strength to live according to his will. By this one gospel, I know Christ lived perfectly for me, sacrificed his life in place of mine, and has clothed me with his righteousness. All credit for my forgiveness goes to him. Help me, Lord, to live for you in thankfulness and joy in this one true gospel, now and always. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. shaping it as seemed best to him. And the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if, it, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended for it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. This is the word of our Lord. Today's second Bible reading comes from Colossians chapter 1, reading verses 12 to 23. The Almighty God created us. Creation is a work of art, but even greater than creation is the gospel masterpiece of reconciliation. Christ has reconciled us to himself, making us holy, blameless, and perfect before him. We hear it. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. 
For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on heaven or things in heaven, or things on earth, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and that, you have, that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel and the singing of the Alleluias. over and over again. 
and just work it. Look at that, I'm like pushing down here really hard. So I'm trying to make a little like bowl or plate out of this thing. I don't know. I'm not a very good artist, but I'm going to try to make something for you. But look at all this, this pinching, this poking. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I'm not If I sat there and pinched and poked you, do you think you like that? A little? A little? Okay. <laughs> How about you, James? If I pinched and poked you, would you like that? Nope. Okay. Let's see, God says, I'm the potter, you're the clay. I can shape you and mold you. Um, so that, a little bit, yeah, a little like a pizza bowl. But yeah, I can shape you, I can mold you. And that's what God does with us all throughout our lives. He is the one who's working on us. And sometimes it might kind of hurt. It might kind of hurt when God does things in our lives. But we have to remember, God is always doing things for our good. He's always trying to shape us and mold us in the exact way that he wants us. And the beautiful thing that we remember, our shape, our mold, what we look like to God, is we're covered with Jesus. And Jesus is as like holy and perfect without any sin. You know, like that's one of the reasons why I wear this like white robe thing. Is like, because I just want you to just kind of see plain white. And that's what God sees when he looks at you. He sees no sin, nothing wrong, no stain, no blemish. Holy because we're covered with Jesus, then life, he's going to give us opportunities to shape us and mold us, to make good decisions, to help other people, to listen to our parents and do chores for them, take care of them, love them, to do good to our friends, our neighbors, because that's God shaping us and molding us into a beautiful work of art. So we are his masterpiece. That's what we're going to talk about today in the message. Because... God has made you perfect through Jesus. That's how you're a masterpiece. That's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, and you're all made very special, very uniquely. So let's thank God for that. Let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for making us so uniquely, individually, but thank you most of all for giving us Jesus, who took away our sins, who covered us with his perfection. We know that through life, as you challenge us, as you cause us to grow, you will shape us in the way that is, is perfect, the way that is the perfection you have clothed us with. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so thank you guys. You can get back to your folks. Thanks for coming. All right, we're going to continue by singing our next hymn. That's hymn 256, especially as you're going to hear words through this, thinking about the glories of creation. I know it's a favorite of many. Let's sing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. Hymn 256, How Great Thou Art. <coughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word that we're going to focus on this morning was from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. You guys get meditation on that word? Let's pray. Lord, you formed us each individually, uniquely, and so also you continue to form and shape us. May we always be formed by you, the hands of the great potter, as we are the clay. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I don't know if you've ever been to a potter's house. You kind of think, and this is why I'm playing this right now, think of what Jeremiah would have come and seen. He would have gone down to the potter's house, saw him working at his wheel, as he'd just seen these potters doing. So, just for a minute, if you haven't already, just watch. So what is it like watching the potter work? What do you observe? Right now, you notice he's using different tools. But very little by little, he's doing things like this, taking off a little bit of layer at a time. Other times, we're getting his hands very dirty, moving them in, moving them out, pulling, shaping, making grooves throughout the pottery. I don't know if you see it, I know it comes up later in the video, but there's also times where he's sitting there, he's smacking the clay, he's pushing it together with his hands, he's working on it. There's a lot that goes into working with pottery, with clay. So as Jeremiah sat there observing this, then he saw something. The pot that the potter was shaping from the clay was marred in the potter's hands. So he formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. And now here, God says, here, Jeremiah, is your lesson. And the word of the Lord came to me, and he said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand, Israel. As you think and you watch him, he works through time and time again. Really, God has always been the potter. I mean, right away in Genesis chapter 2, when it talks about God forming man, he says he forms Adam out of the dust of the earth. What is clay? It's just a form of dirt, a form of earth. That's all it is. So with the same kind of building materials, he formed Adam and breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living being. He was perfect perfectly formed, just the way he wanted, and it was good. Until the day the clay became marred, spoiled. Something's wrong with it now. It's spoiled, it's marred because of sin. That Adam, in complete and total free will, chose to disobey God and his command, chose to say, 
you said not to eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, I, I want to eat from it. And my wife, she wants to eat from it. We're going to eat from it. And they did. The clay was marred. It was imperfect. It was spoiled. It was not right. It's a lesson we know. We know that we too are marred with sin. We are marred with disobedience. It doesn't take much to look around in this world to see all the atrocities happening. Just two more mass murder shooting, shootings that just happened. How awful and evil wicked people are. But at the same time, we make that a little bit more personal, bring that home, and we're at least willing to say, hey, Nobody's perfect. We look into our own hearts and we see how selfish, how hypocritical, how deceitful we can be just in our own lives. We're marred with sin. But God was willing to get his hands dirty, just like the potter you can kind of think, I'm a guy who doesn't like to get his hands dirty, very literally. It's just a texture thing. Um, God is willing to do that. Just like you see the hands of these, these potters, and he's working with the tool right now, but when you see it all gunked up with the clay, because he was willing to come down to take on our clay, our flesh, so that he could work for us perfection, that he could work for us our salvation. He did this in a way that was free from the marring, free from the spoiling that we brought into it by sin. Instead, he was perfect because he's God. And being perfect, he lived in perfect obedience to all of God's commands. He kept them all for the purpose of reshaping us, remolding us, reforming us to be that masterpiece that God had always intended us to be. Jesus in no way, shape, or form was ever imperfect. But he allowed other people to mar his body, to beat it, to scourge it, little pieces of metal and bone which ripped open his skin, caused him to bleed, to where he let the nails pierce into his hands, his feet. He allowed himself in that way to be disfigured. He shed his blood to pay for our sins, to pay for our imperfections. But then we know how that story goes. Three days later, God raised him from the dead. He put him on display. Here is Jesus raised from the dead. He has taken away all of your sins. He held him up as that perfect masterpiece, the one who did perfection for us because we never could, because we are marred held Jesus up, saying, this now is how I look at you. That this perfect piece of art, this covers over you. Because of what I have done for you. I am the potter, you are the clay. As you're watching this, do you feel good about the idea of being clay? To actually think of yourself there on the wheel as the potter is working it time and time again? Would you ever think about what that kind of has to feel like? To be pushed and pressed, to be pinched, to be having the fingers run through over and over, creating ripples throughout your entire body? When you kind of look at what's happening with the clay, And if you're the clay, you probably have that thought, that kind of looks like it might hurt. That might be uncomfortable. That might not feel very good. And so it is with God shaping, reforming our lives, just as he was showing to Jeremiah. We think about what our God does for us. He gives us these opportunities in our lives time and time again, having made us as a new creation, clothed with Christ's perfection, he now gives you opportunities time and time again to 
love him, serve him, to follow his commands, not as if to earn any of his love, not as if to make yourself into a masterpiece, but to be reshaped. And so it often can kind of come in ways that hurt. Ways that come to you again and again and again. He doesn't just run his hand through the pot once, but over and over again to get it to the desired shape, exactly as he wants it to be. To think about that in our lives, when God does reshape us, remold us, maybe when he takes things out of our lives, cuts into our lives and removes something, and we're sitting there, whether it be a loved one that we have or, or a job that we count on, it just it hurts. That God is, is taking this away from me. And there's the other side of it, the, the self-denial aspect of it to what God calls simply repentance when we deny ourselves the things that we may want to do but we know they are contrary to God's will. To have that moment when you know what is right, when you know you want to just exit out that zinger from your lips that will finally put that person in their place, but yet that's an opportunity from God to say, hey, you can be reshaped, you can be remolded, because right now you could choose to not say that. When you can choose to speak a word of encouragement, a word to build up, instead of one to tear down. You know, an opportunity presented before you where maybe your eyes get filled with lust, you're, you're looking around and the temptation is there, but it's an opportunity from God to say, no, I'm content with what I have, with whom he has put in my life, that I'm content with the sexual purity that my God has given me. This is God reshaping, remolding us all throughout our lives, just like the potter does with his clay. But there's a whole other aspect to this too. What, what is the clay contributing? Nothing. It's just there. It's there and the potter is shaping and molding it and maybe for another moment that kind of makes us cringe a little bit because it's the idea that I'm not in control that maybe I would like better instead of God being the potter and me the clay, maybe we can just talk about it in terms of a barber and, and getting my hair cut because, you know, I go up to my barber and I can say, well, here's the kind of hairstyle I want. I want you to cut it like that. Don't you dare cut anything more beyond that. And if I don't like it, I don't have to come back to you. So we have control. But you don't have any control when you're the clay. You're being shaped, you're being molded by the hands of the potter. In other words, you are at the mercy of the potter. But when we remember who's the potter, as you pretty much have just seen hands for the most part of this, God is our potter. The one who is forming us and shaping us in our lives. When you think about, well, I'm not in control of my life, I am at the mercy of another, think of whose mercy you're at. You're at the mercy of God. Of how He is going to treat you, not as you deserve to be treated. He doesn't just take the pot, see that it's marred, and say, well, done with that, get rid of that, let's start over. He pulls it all back together, <clears throat> starts again, shaping and molding us Day after day of our lives, the potter is working on us, the clay. And we know that if God is the potter, then we know the one who is shaping us and who is molding us, no matter how painful it feels, no matter how long it lasts, no matter how many times he has to run his finger through and make those, those intricate patterns with those special tools, that he is doing every single part of this for our good. That this is to shape us and mold us in that perfect image which Christ has already won for us. And so as we live here on this earth, we are shaped by the potter time and time again. This is the lesson that the Lord was giving to Jeremiah, the lesson that he wanted to give to his people, to the Israelites. Because he was shaping them 
and molding them. And yep, it was going to hurt. There's actually some looming things in the future. Things that Jeremiah would live through. He would live through the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the Holy Temple. He would see that happen and think for a moment, God has abandoned us. So God gives this lesson at the potter's house. Watching the clay getting shaped and molded. And tells us in advance, this is how I operate. That I want you to be reshaped, to be reformed according to my word, to my will, to what I have done for you. And now in response to that, what I want you to do. How I want your life to be reshaped and remolded. Because the truth of the matter is, yeah, we're not actually clay. Maybe made up of earth, but we're humans. As such, God has given us a free will, a will that can stubbornly refuse to be shaped by God. So he tells us, if that's going to be your choice, I will reconsider the good I had planned for you. So he announces, Jeremiah, this is what I want you to tell the people. Say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says, look, I'm preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you. Reform your ways and your actions. God is giving this message through Jeremiah the prophet specifically so that the people of Israel would have good, would be prospered, that they would be conformed to his perfect image. What's not recorded is their answer. The next verse. Sadly, when the Israelites hear the message from Jeremiah, they say it's useless. We're just going to keep going back to our old ways. We're going to be stubborn. We're just going to keep on sinning. So as you think of this idea... And hear the words again from Jeremiah that we are the clay, the Lord is the potter. How will you respond to that today? When he says, reform, reshape, be shaped by my word, by what I say, what are we going to answer? Are we going to say, no, sorry God, I just, I can't. I can't do it, I can't handle it, I won't do it, so, Sorry. Or will he answer, knowing that God has already made for us the masterpiece, that that is what we are clothed with through Jesus Christ, that we know the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to know that we are in his hands, at his mercy, for our good. Well, knowing that, knowing whose hands are, I am in, knowing that I am in the potter's hands, and he is going to shape and form my life in accordance to his word. Well, then I say, Lord, I'm going to keep messing it up. So reshape me. Reform me. Mold me according to your word, according to your will, and not mine. Mine's going to mess it up. Mine's going to be marred with sin. But if your hands are doing the work, Lord, if you are the potter and I am the clay, I know how this turns out. You have made me perfect through Christ. You will make me a masterpiece. So, Lord, into your hands, just as Jesus did, I commit myself. I commend myself. Form me and shape me as you see best. Because you are the potter. We are the clay. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue in our worship by confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. They start on page 9 in the worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We would look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Before we gather our offerings, just a note to our guests and visitors who are with us today. First of all, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. We're so thankful you joined us. If you'd like to learn more about what we teach, preach, and believe here at Light in the Valley, we have contact cards in every second and fourth chair in that rack by the red hymnal. You can fill that out with your name and whatever cover, whatever else contact information you'd like me to use, and I will uh, work on getting a hold of you this following week. You can put those contact cards in the offering plates that come around, or you can hand them to me at the end of the service today. So that in mind, let's continue our worship by gathering our gifts and offerings to that great potter, our Lord, our God, our Savior. Mm -hmm. us 
and now bears us in the midst of them. According to your will, help, heal, comfort, and restore the sick among us. Give skill and compassion to those who serve them in their need. We thank you for the care that you've bestowed upon Camden Bagshaw, the son of, of Justin and Angel Bagshaw. Camden had surgery this past Friday to remove his tonsils, but the surgery went well, and Lord, now he is home and he is healed. We ask, Lord, for a quick recovery, knowing that in you, he is in the greatest hands possible. Also, Lord, we ask that you would watch over all of our expectant mothers, that you would keep child and mother safe throughout the rest of their pregnancy and bring them into this world and into your family through the holy waters of baptism. Lord, also we pray for those who attended our uh, Art Studio Bible Camp this past week, that the message preached there, that they would take to heart and keep with them always to know that they are God's masterpiece, that we all are your masterpiece through what Christ has done for us. And also, Lord, let them enjoy the wonderful gift of art that you have given to us, that creativity, those masterpieces that we make day in, day out, to be pleased with all these gifts and abilities that come from you. And now, Lord, we ask you to hear us as we bring you our private petitions. All these things, what else that you see that we need? Grant us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who shaped us into his perfection and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Well, thank you for joining us on this uh, Sunday morning uh, to share God's Word, to see how He shapes and molds us as He is the potter, we are the clay, but all into that perfect image so that we are His masterpiece. Uh, as far as announcements go, first of all, if you haven't had a chance to peruse it and take a look at it, you can see uh, the many artworks that uh, the participants in Bible Camp uh, did over this past week. Um, many thanks to Brenda, particularly, for uh, really leading uh, the Bible Camp teaching the art specifically, but huge thanks to all the people who helped in decorating and donating, being here, the teachers. Uh, it went great. Um, and so we're just really thankful for everything. Pretty, I don't know that there's anybody who was excluded from helping on this. Uh, it was a huge effort by our church, so just thank you all uh, for what you have done to make that uh, successful. Uh, we have lots of goodies that are here. Uh, some of them were, I think, maybe even all of them. Some of them were at least given as snacks during the Bible camp. Some neat things to uh, to enjoy and to, uh, to have. Um, so come enjoy those. Some of them are artworks on their own. Those ladies did a great job making very creative treats. Yeah, so there's artwork even in the treats. I mean, that's very purposeful by design. So enjoy that, and thank you again for the ladies who put that together. Uh, you can see the other uh, announcements, the other things that are coming up. I guess uh, just kind of keep note. The school supply drive will collect through um, next Sunday, through the 18th, and then next week we'll be dropping that off over at E.G. King uh, Elementary, you know, just down the road here. So one more week to gather some more school supplies before we drop those off. And then also uh, men's group this Saturday, 5, right, Eric? Yes. All right. Uh, so that you can see the other announcements. Act on them as you wish. Uh, there's a little collage kind of showing you what kind of happened throughout the week. There's a picture board also going up, a um, little photo, digital photo frame scrolling through. Uh, but say hello to the people you come to worship. May somebody you haven't said hello to yet. And then stay as long as you like, enjoy, check out some art, eat some good snacks. I'll get to the back to shake, you, uh, to shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on your week.